Hello and welcome everybody to Shared Insights, the podcast from BA Insight. My name is Pete Wright, and I am joined today by Jeff Freed. Jeff, hello. How are you, sir? Hello. I'm doing fabulously. It has been some time uh, since we have podcasted together. Uh, the summer has been a nice little uh, reprieve from work things, and now we're we're back into it. How how has your summer been? Any any events of note that you you feel like you need to report? Oh, I've been all over the place, uh, mostly in various bodies of water. I think I've uh, been in fourteen ponds and <laughs> two oceans and a couple of bays. So uh, next time, if you, if you actually see me, I probably just look like a giant razor. <laughs> Outstanding. It, it adds, I, I think, to the uh, to the image of, of the podcaster. I think one who is well swum. Uh, we are talking about the BA Insight Smart Hub today uh, and the thinking that went into the development of this new product about which you say the following on the BA Insight website. Smart Hub will make your employees believe in enterprise search again. It's blazoned across the landing page, so I have to start there. Jeff, has Smart Hub made you believe in smart or in enterprise search again yourself? Ah, I'm I'm one of the um, keepers of the flame, so I never <laughs> lost the belief that search could meet its promise because I've seen it happen at so many places. But our marketing elves have been very uh, hard at work over the summer, as you might notice, if our, our web page looks totally different. And it also includes phrases like this, which I would love to hear from listeners whether they like it or not. The basic promise of being able to know what you know and have information at your fingertips has not changed with search. But as you know, the problem has gotten harder and increasingly people are having a hard time keeping up. And that is why we decided to take a step back and come out with a brand new product, which is a net new face for search with a lot of cool features. That's the thing I'm most excited to hear about, this new face for search. It reads as a dramatically user-centric approach to, as you say, knowing what you know. And yet it handles so many birds, as you've said to me in the past, so many birds with one stone. It's it's easy to look at the, at, at the underlying pieces that go into this and think, well, that's Frankenstein's monster, right? It, what is it? What does it do? And, and what does it make easier for users? Sure. Well, let me start. Start out with what it is and what it does. The Smart Hub is the center of what I would call query side activity. It is a search center, and uh, I'd encourage listeners to ask for a demo and give us feedback. When you look at it, I think you would simply say, of course. It's not a radically different paradigm, but it's a well-engineered search center. It's what you sort of expect from a modern UI in a standalone search center. But the UI is actually most visible part, obviously, but for me, it's not the most exciting part. The most exciting part is, I'll, I'll call it a search mashup service, which is my own techno jargon. It's, it is a service that queries and results go through. That's why we call it a hub. Mm -hmm. And what we've built is not just the framework for doing that, but a bunch of pre-built processing. You know, what that really lets you do is a number of things. It lets you do personalization because we have access to a user's context, you know, who you are, what you're trying to do, your location, your role, your preferences, and we change the query to add those things in or accommodate for them things you do or don't want. And that personalization is a really essential tool. The second thing that sort of mashup does is allow us to support multiple search platforms. Now, this is something we've been doing for a while, but we've built it out more and more. And those listeners that are familiar with our federator will recognize this search mashup service. It, it has many of the same functionalities and many of the same benefits. So the thing that we've done that is net new, meaning I've never done it this way before, is to call different cognitive services and use those to make your search smarter or to let you do types of search that you just couldn't do before. Can you give us an example of this in action? What does this look like? What it looks like is 
a search center UI you walk up to. It embeds, which embeds into normal pages, into SharePoint sites, into uh, your website or different applications, and includes, if you wish, multiple sort of panes of dynamic content that's personalized. So the, it's one of the sort of the query response paradigm in a search center and also the static zero term search. And let's say that you are looking for marketing collateral on a particular thing. You will ask simply about that thing, that let's say product. Yeah, like a, the 2018 brochure. Traditionally, you'd get everything about that whether it was manuals or service records and collateral, since your role is in marketing, we bias collateral high on the list. And let's say you are in France, you'll get the French version top of the list. So that's a, a simple personalization. We're simply looking at your profile and adding those parameters as filters in the case of like language. You don't want to see a Chinese version or what I call influencers, things that change what's top of the list based upon your preferences. That starts to give me a picture of the impact that this can make on the user. What's your sense uh, beyond that of the significance of Smart Hub? There's a lot of significance from the standpoint of the ability to tie in these different cognitive services and these different search engines. There's one other thing that I'd mention. We've been working a lot with Office 365 and search in Office 365. As you know, we've been feeding cloud hybrid search with our connectors for a long time. Sure. Working really closely with Microsoft. But there's things that are limitations and feature issues which we couldn't solve without having our own UI. With the on-prem systems, we've had this federator that is like a middleware. In Office 365, there's no way to do that and inter intercept things. So what are examples of that? There's limited security models in Office 365. So what we call our advanced security module works with Smart Hub and could not otherwise support Office 365. There's a series of linguistic gaps in Office 365 search, which we've addressed with Smart Hub by doing pre-processing on the query. So there's one piece, which is if you're an Office 365 user and you want better search, we've been on this sort of whack-a-mole adventure with Microsoft to find and solve a series of issues. And this gives us a way to solve the hardest remaining issues. If you are conversely working with, let's say, a new search service and let's say you want to choose elastic cloud which is elastic searches hosted offering we now support that with smart hub it means that you get a pre-packaged experience working in a very capable sophisticated search index that's run for you by elastic that's a very significant thing, especially as more and more folks start using cloud search. We've added in an Elastic Cloud support, something that is very fast, very scalable, and extremely capable that you can spin up with no need for infrastructure. Fascinating. And I, you know, since we've started talking more and more about Elastic, I think over the last, certainly over the last 12 months uh, on this show, how has this changed the way, or I should say impacted the way you think about your development strategy, your strategy at BA Insight in, in terms of, you know, cognitive search? Ah, really good question. What we've done along with this is do what we're calling a best of breed strategy. And what that means is will support cognitive services from Microsoft and from Google that are running in the cloud, which changes our development strategy because we can work really quickly. And you'll see a series of pretty cool features as a result, as well as an ability if a prospect or customer wants, it, wants to do something, uh, we have a whole new class of things that are possible. That's, to me, the biggest significance around Smart Hub. How does this fit with the rest of the BA Insight product line? Where do you see this in terms of where you'd like customers to learn about it, interact with it, and integrate it? Um, it fits in with effectively all of other, our other products because we've continued to make things that are modules, almost like Lego blocks that you can plug in. Mm -hmm. And we'll take the added tax of making them all interoperable and also standalone in order to meet customers wherever they are in their, in their search project. 
calling it Smart Hub now tips the scale. If you look at our website and our product portfolio, we've got more than a third of our products named something with smart in it. Uh, and our, <laughs> our marketing <laughs> folks insist we have no dumb products. So I will predict that eventually all of our products will be smart <laughs> or named smart anyway. That's aspirational marketing is what that is. Yeah. Yeah. So the strongest tie-ins are with the auto classifier and with smart analytics. For example, with the auto classifier and smart hub, we now have a, I call it a full sandwich. We have full control and very powerful pluggable processing on the content side and the same thing on the query side. So for example, let's say you want to use linked data, which is a huge public cross-linked semantic facility we can mark up data and find corresponding links and publicly known entities in the auto classifier and then in smart hub intercept those and give you the definition of things along with the results so you see not just documents about pete wright but you see your public profile and your wikipedia page and your definition and the cognitive services which if you look i have a a, a blog about what I call the cognitive arms race, they're evolving very, very quickly. Another example is image processing. So we've added image processing along with this introduction of Smart Hub to provide tagging of things with photos and images in them and image search. The way that works is that the auto classifier, as it's parsing and looking at all of the content that you're crawling, it will find the images that are within documents as well as maybe you have a picture library and send those to the Google Cloud and the Google Vision Service specifically, or the Microsoft Machine Vision Service, or both. And these services are pre-trained with tens of millions of images to come back with what's in this photo or what's in this diagram. And they have built-in OCR that's very high accuracy. So you also get anything that looks like text. You know, I had a project document that had pictures I took from my iPhone of a whiteboard. And it picked it up and recognized the text and provided that text and then classification of that text. Which is which is amazing. And I think anybody who's been using, you know, we, we've talked so often about the, the, the consumer uh, experience leaking into the business. I mean, anybody who's been using Google, Google Photos over the last, you know, I don't remember when they first announced this as being a part of the back end of Google Photos, maybe six months, a year ago. Yep. It, it is really stunning when you upload your large library of photos and just search for horse and see you know everything from thoroughbreds at the racetrack that you took you know 15 years ago to uh you know carnival rides that have horses on it's amazing it really is and the rapid advance is both because of the algorithms but really because of the breadth of data and the available processing power right. in these cloud services so in the last 6 months the microsoft cognitive service for vision came out as ga the google Cloud Vision API updated by versions. Microsoft came out with a custom vision service that lets you take, let's say you, okay, you can recognize horses. Now you want to recognize things that are really specific to you. That's right. just a drag and drop training. My wife did this for gardening and she put in photos that were of subspecies of particular flowers and trained it to recognize the difference between you know, different kinds of begonias. <laughs> Google has now come out with an ability to take within TensorFlow, which is their open source um, machine learning element, to take vision and image processing models into that. So that's in six months. And the accuracy has gone up by at least a factor of two. What we're doing with our best of breed integration, if you will, is to simply leverage those, make sure that they work well, understand the vagaries in them, and make it easy for our customers to integrate them. We're not hosting those services. Typically, they're paid for in our customers' own cloud subscription, but we get back pretty accurate tags and text, which we then further process mm -hmm. because on these services, you get confidence levels. You also typically get a much broader set of classifications than you actually want for a business application. 
So that's an example of using best of breed strategy, Microsoft and Google for image processing, and also making it so that if our customers want to tune or train, they don't have to come to us. They can go directly to the studios and we don't have to build, let's say, a training fixture or UI for the cognitive models. Is it your vision that Smart Hub becomes the de facto standard interaction with search through BA Insight products? Yes, absolutely. And, you know, we've already hooked it up to a bunch of search engines and some cognitive services in the first version. And you'll see more of that. For example, there's recommendations that we are, well, I'm, I'm going to put in a spoiler, but imagine that our smart analytics is able to use machine learning to provide recommendations. Where would they show up? They'd show up in Smart Hub. I'll take that spoiler. Right. And we've gotten pretty excited about the power of open source in this process. So I'm considering open sourcing the UI, the search center element within Smart Hub, and I'd love feedback from any listeners around that because now that we have something which is independent of SharePoint, it's standalone, it's built in the React framework, which is very broadly known mm -hmm. and just sort of normal tooling, we could open it up to customers, developers, partners, to do some pretty exciting things, some of which I've never thought of. So watch this space, and uh, I'd love any feedback from listeners about the subject of should we open source our UI. Do you have any uh, further comments on search engine support uh, that we want to drill down into here? Uh, or shall we just uh, tell people where to go for more information? I think that we should do another podcast about the state of the search engine market and how it's evolving. Mm -hmm. I'll say that I became very excited about the Elastic Cloud when I really did the arithmetic about the pricing of it and saw how that worked. And that is also now a multi-cloud capability. It runs natively on AWS, but it also is a beta version on Google Cloud now. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing a lot more adoption of cloud-based search and the evolution in SharePoint search is one that is also a really interesting subject. But more on that later. What I'd leave people with for now is check out our new website. Check out the Smart Hub new product. Once you read about it, you can ask for a demo. And the other element of cognitive search and the, the sort of best of breed strategy is both watch this space and imagine the possibilities. We're going to build out, you know, I've got a in my evil master plan specific scenarios we're going to build out, but I love doing that with customers. For example, I've got a number of customers and prospects specifically around image search that have taught us about the real world needs. They don't want to just recognize kittens on green grass. They want to find distinctions between different kinds of industrial machinery that is specific to them. So we've made sure we can do that. That's uh, that's fantastic. I can't wait to hear more about that. And uh, to as you continue to refine your thinking and approach to this cognitive arms race, that demands another podcast all on its own. And so I'm I'm hoping that's on your calendar for sometime before the end of the year. Absolutely, we'll make that happen. And for the listeners out there, if you're not sick of my voice yet, I'll make sure you will be by the end of the year. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. There we go. Uh, thank you, BA Insight CTO Jeff Freed. It is great to have you back uh, in the fall and podcasting again and look forward to a, a slate uh, of educational and informative podcasts to come. Thank you, everybody. You can check out more about the podcast at BA Insight or subscribe for free in Apple Podcasts or uh, any of the uh, podcast directories where finer podcasts are served. Uh, we sure appreciate your time and attention. Until next time, we will see you right here on Shared Insights, the podcast from BA Insight.